Hello and welcome to the No Holds Barred Witchcraft Podcast. Chris, you said the gastro pubs, they're all are closing down. Tell our American friends what a gastro pub is and tell us why they're all closing their down. Well, after the after the smoking ban in the UK, because I don't know what that's like elsewhere in the world, but the um, you know, two thousand oh god. When was it? About 2010, 2012, something 2000 like that? And, um, yeah, 2010, I think it came in. When all the smoking hot people were refused entry into pubs, is that what it was? Yeah, so you, you were no longer allowed to smoke in pubs um, <laughs> across the UK. Um, and then suddenly, the certain pubs, so like you had like the, what I call the old man pubs, mm. Uh, which is where the only people that drink in there are old men and they start drinking at 12 o'clock when it opens. Yeah. And they get kicked out about 10 when their wives call them for tea. Yeah. Um, you have those kind of pubs. that So a handful of those would kind of survive. Um, and then the, the rest kind of had to adapt. So yeah. suddenly they either had to serve food and a lot of these became like gastro pubs where they did they served like a a decent a decent variety of menu uh, and became kind of like these pub restaurant hybrids Mm. um or they had to kind of entertain the plebs so there had to be like a karaoke night and a quiz night and a you know like every night had to have a theme or a thing going on yeah in order to keep the locals coming back in because if they couldn't, you know, if they had to be interested enough to go there and every 10 minutes go out and smoke outside. Um, so that kind of killed off a lot of pubs. Um, and particularly in, in my area, like in the black country, where, you know, you used to be able to stumble from one pub to another. Mm. Like we had roads that had got 10, 15 of them on a run. Um and they've kind of dwindled down to about three. Um, I used to be able to go from literally used to be able to drink your way from one town to the next. Yeah. In this kind of area. So I don't know if it was quite as bad, like uh, as well, good. Pretty much. I mean, you're talking about Bristol, but... all, all over the UK. You're talking that every village had every hamlet had a pub. Yeah. <laughs> every village had two pubs. And the cities basically were filled with pubs. There was essentially one uh, every couple of roads over. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, back in the day, they served a massive purpose because they were like the community hubs, weren't they? You'd had the yeah. church and then you had the pub. Yeah. And then that was it, you know? So that was your community kind of center, community place. And they, there's quite an interesting history with regards to pubs and stuff like that and what how they evolved and stuff. That's why there were so many of them. But now they're all getting turned into like apartments and that sort of thing. Mm. Some of them being knocked down completely. But um it's quite sad in a way that some of them have got quite a lot of character and stuff like that. But the business side of things, the people aren't seeming to innovate. They seem to not make a huge amount of money because a lot of them are owned by breweries and stuff so they don't seem to make a lot of money on the drink it's mainly like food and stuff and then how much of that is going on waste on staff and it's not very profitable business is it and then covid hit and now they're completely decimated yeah well like you know for me um my first like three or four houses were pubs like pubs Mm. were a big part of my family's kind of way of operating through life. So to kind of get to the point where there aren't any, just kind of is quite sad. Um, you know, I, is, uh, we should probably state there that your family have run a number of pubs, haven't they? <laughs> They're not, I know you're from the Midlands, you see, so that's why people might get confused. We're yeah, I didn't mean just... they're alcoholics, although half of them were. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, they were making making money. One is the pub trade is really hard to make money in. Mm. So, like, you really need to have a gimmick or a particular pull for clientele. Like, in the olden days, like you say, they were a community hub. So, yeah. 
that was on a Sunday, you'd have two or three local football teams would come and they would, you know, you'd have chips and butties after after the game, the Sunday league kind of games had finished and right. and they'd all end up there. And it was that kind of, that's how a Sunday afternoon went. And you wouldn't eat, you wouldn't eat your Sunday lunch till about six o'clock um, kind of thing. It was part part and parcel of kind of just being in that kind of world. Um, so yeah, it's it it was a big part of life. And then when the smoking ban happened, that kind of decimated them. COVID's then happened since then. Um, and now, yeah, I don't know what will kind of survive. You know, which ones will survive. I know like even the big nasty chains like Mars, you know, like Marsden's Brewery or um, Weatherspoons, for example, of I think they've put a list out of something like 400 pubs in the country that they're just axing. Yeah. Um, Marsden's are at least putting all theirs up for auction. So uh, I think a lot of those potentially could be bought out by your small independent breweries and things. Because mm. um, it kind of felt like there was a bit of a revival a couple of years ago where suddenly you'd got um, all these kind of little independent breweries kind of popping up where they got yeah, micro breweries in the back. Yeah. Where they were brewing on site in small batches. Um, and a friend of mine built a gin business in the last couple of years. Like, you know, mm. there's definitely a different kind of relationship with alcohol these days mm. than maybe was had before. Um, you know, not to go too much into the history of it, but, you know, they started off of part of... <laughs> I was watching a really interesting little mini documentary thing on YouTube the other day about how um, long before hops came along, yeah, um, beer was something that was made and was quite heavily spiced mm. and was the trade of women, really, that would... Um, you know, if they had bakeries or they made home a bread at home, they would use kind of the leftovers to make these kind of um, top up money yeah. income. And you just go to a local town. And it's partly why all these weird ales and things have strange names is mm. because they would have a gimmick. So it might be a woman with a witch's hat on. Yeah. Um, and like a you know dressed up as this kind of a gargoyly kind of grotesque but she was just selling off her kind of spiced wares um and then kind of the witch hunts came along and that kind of disappeared um yeah. and then in in replacement for that you had the hops which suddenly beer was something completely different <laughs> so well i mean with regard to making beers and stuff like that, I mean, back in the day, it was safer to drink beer than it yeah. was to drink water. So that is what you actually did. You would drink uh, more beer than you would drink water because the water wasn't very, you know, healthy and we didn't have indoor plumbing and such. Yeah. Um, but then it was also not as high alcohol in terms of proof on that. No, it wasn't about the alcohol, was it? It was about having something tasty to drink. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, pub culture is very different now. It's about getting as hammered as you can, as quickly as you can, but yeah, at least for the youth. Um, whereas I think it's with the gastro pub change, that kind of changed the culture of how we used pubs. Mm. Um, they become more of a family institution, yeah. um, which I suppose is closer and in, in kin than with um, how my memory of pubs was when i was younger um but yeah i don't know in terms of the business of it i don't know what they'll do um i think it would be nice to know they all went to that kind of microbrew end again where they kind of become these little independents with all their own way of doing it mm. i generally think that's probably the only way because you know the cost of actually running a pub these days with the charge the amount of money breweries yeah. charge ridiculous um you know your bear you know most of your income is coming from um the other things that you do mm. than necessarily selling 
alcohol now and that's just to kind of keep your head above water and pay off um the um the brewery but yeah i don't know i kind of i hope it'll go in this kind of micro brew way of kind of going where places specialize in a you know a gin or or a, a whiskey or, or whatever and they'll become more individual identities mm. i just think there'll be a lot less of them so you've talked about gimmicks and stuff like that one of the biggest gimmicks with regards to pubs is that i don't know quite how many most haunted pub in the uk <laughs> how many actual pubs claim that but there's more than one and there should really be only one most haunted pub in the uk surely you know yeah but you could have the most haunted in somerset and then the most haunted in they don't say that they some of them do <clears throat> like i've been to like the most haunted pub in wales and stuff like that and then there's ones which but there are a number of them that say the most haunted pub in the uk and that is like who because <laughs> i mean how would you test that they have these paranormal nip nitwits that go in is it the most amount of um dust flying around yeah on i mean orbs sorry most amount of orbs pictured or something like that how, how do you judge what's the most haunted i don't know the would you would you think that that most haunted is most active or would you say the most number of ghosts mm. um like you know is it a sardine can and you'd like as many as you can get in the better I suppose it would have to go on paranormal activity, wouldn't it? So, but, but then I, surely active works on on how how much of that they can sense, which I is good what, or measure. If you want a gimmick for a pub, then why not create a pub that is the most passively haunted pub in the UK? <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, a co uh, 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 one of those uh, paper beer mats levitates. <laughs> yeah, but it happens, but once every five years, when someone leaves one of the doors open. <laughs> yeah. Um. I I like I like the concept. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know how how they'll survive if they survive. Mm. Um. So I went. Uh, we had one open up. Um, a new pub open up on our in our village, um, and it's a micro bar. Right. So not a micro brewery, a micro bar, bar, which essentially means it's one small room with a bar in it, which oh, has a capacity right. of about twenty or something like that. Mm. Um, where they turned an old television shop into into a bar, um, and I think to be fair, some of it something's brewed or whatever on site but it's not a micro brewery so it's a micro fit, it's a uh, micro pub <laughs> the bbb the bristol bear bar could that fit inside that or is it even smaller than that because that's literally Ooh. the size of a, a sofa <laughs> and there's a lot of pubs like that you find around the center of bristol there's bigger ones but then there's also these tiny little ones which literally they are like uh, a phone shop counter in Tesco's or something like that is literally just yeah. a till bar and then three bar stores and then that's it. Yeah. No, it's a little bit bigger than that. It's got a handful of little tables. I reckon it can fit about 20 people in there. So all of these pubs, a lot of them are getting sold at auctions and such like that. I mean, some of them are quite cool looking and historic and there's not going to be a huge amount that you could do a lot of builders and uh, property developers would probably turn them into some sort of apartments or maybe like uh, old people's homes or something like that. But I think a couple of them might make for quite interesting witchcraft shops. Yes, potentially. Because they're very old. They've got a lot of history to them. There's probably going to be cats and piss bottles. Uh, sorry, witch bottles in the uh, in the walls and such, isn't there? Well, That'd be interesting. It's funny you should say that because I haven't mentioned this to you, Liam. But one of the ha one of the pubs that may be going up for sale mm. um, in one of the lists I had seen was the Crooked House, oh, which is the one by me, which actually is yeah. one of the, you know, haunted places in Britain. But more is interesting on the basis that the house is crooked. It looks like an actual um like fairy tale <clears throat> witch's house, doesn't it? 
so that the crooked house really would make the most wonderful witchcraft shop but mm. um because it's dizzying to walk around mm. um because nothing <laughs> nothing is where it should be um but i imagine that place will eventually just crumble and fall down at some point mm. um but no i don't know it would be nice if some of them were used and kept their names in some way, shape, or form in the same way that a lot of banks have closed. Oh, yeah, they're all turning into these like cafe bars. Grand yeah, bars. um, there's one, there's one in the high street I've always wanted, but um, or right opposite the clock in the in the kind of central courtyard kind of bit of the whole town. Um, but no, I like. I would like to think they get reused mm. um, or something happens with them. Uh, I think partly, I sometimes am a bit um, conspiracy theorist about some of them because they're also quite lucrative plots mm. of land. Right. Um, and sometimes I wonder if these things happen in order so they can be flattened and suddenly build a load of houses on the site. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is these put these buildings are out of date, you know, outdated and need serial uh, serious structural work. But mm. I don't know. Well, pubs and magic go way back, don't they? Because in in a lot of spells and stuff, particularly within folk magic, in that are uh, grave uh, dirt from the graveyard. You've got dirt from outside the pub and such. You've got dirt from like uh courtrooms or courts and stuff like that like the crown court um but yeah so it's interesting i mean it's a big part of heritage that has been a massive thing and not really nowadays uh with the younger generation and such it tends to be all like clubs and such showing my age now aren't i but i've always preferred a pub i like a pub and i do like food as well um. I don't know. I there is a part of me that misses clubbing, um, but then I look at kind of other parts of Europe and think of all those kind of bars and restaurants in kind of catacombs and yeah. um, those sorts of spaces that are just kind of like they're quite they're very cool. Um, these kind of underground, um, interesting spaces. Mm. Uh, but no, I do love pubs and I'll always will. Um, even if there aren't any left um but we'll see so the failure of the pubs very often it has to be down to a lack of innovation because there's a simple idea with the pub and i remember because we're both old enough to remember when a lot of pubs didn't serve food and yeah. that there are a number of people that ran pubs and said, you know, I won't ever serve food. We don't do that, blah, 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 blah. And then they yeah. end up having to because that's the only way that they can make a profit. And it's normally the same old kind of chips and burgers and stuff like that. Um, a lot of the pubs you wouldn't necessarily want to eat in. <laughs> there was a particular one in Moreland, which you wouldn't even want a pint in that one. It was so disgusting. <laughs> and I only went there because I got paid to go there to fix a fault during Somerset Levels floods and uh, I got to see behind the scenes and I got to see in the kitchen and trust me you would not even want a pint and there was so fucking disgusting but anyway <laughs> pub electrics are one of the worst types of buildings they're just how the majority of them don't burn down I don't know as for the paranormal activity with the flicker and lights like well if it's in a pub you know that it's going to be dodgy <laughs> shit you know um but anyway, lack of innovation, really. So this is something that's probably dying out, I think, primarily for a lack of innovation, because you really need to innovate and change what the pub is. And you need to go back to, mm. in this day and age, being some form of community centre, which there are community centres in villages and towns and such like that. But they don't really innovate. They don't really do a lot. Some of them might do a Zumba class. When I think of the cemetery like Arnas Bell, the amount of innovation they've done for a fucking cemetery mm. is quite a lot. It's quite substantial, you know? But we don't get those sorts of people that seem to be taking on 
certain things that are dying out like the pubs and stuff like that and to a certain extent even hotels with hotel bnb and all that they, they should be starting to get a little bit more innovative and such do you think this is ever going to happen in regards to what we could go into now which is like more witchcraft shops and occult stores and stuff like that because i've known quite a few of those that go bust because people start them up and then they don't really know anything about business they just bought buy a load of shit from aliexpress with pentagrams on it and expect to be able to sell that incense pentagram candle burner incense burner for like 50 quid which you know you can't um and could that be the next thing to die thanks to mr bezos and such um, potentially, which I don't think is also, uh, you know, totally the worst thing ever. Um, I must say, like, with the the death of pubs, I do worry about the death of moots. Yeah. Um, because finding spaces that are for free or yeah. cheap um, are very quickly disappearing mm. to the point of actually, well, at what point are, is a space going to be provided for community? Because, mm. like you say churches don't really do it anymore church halls really struggle um unless they've got a kind of um a good um wedding kind of set up that they're set up and geared like i remember a few years ago trying to arrange a, a get together for like a christmas do or something like that um and really struggling to find a social club um that could act that was actually kind of affordable because um, I'm somehow surprised how some of those still exist. Yeah. Um, because of how little they do, like you say, even attempting to do a Zumba class or mm. something like that would be an attempt. So I don't know. I wonder what's going to happen. I know part of it's down to the fact up until COVID, and I think actually COVID's been a really positive effect in some ways. Um, it may have helped kill off the pubs. But I do think more and more people have been trying to come together to do things mm. um, a little bit more often than was probably happening beforehand. And, um, because people have realised what isolation really looks like um, and have started to push a little bit in the other direction. I just don't think enough people do. Mm. I don't think there's a big enough community of any kind. Um, and I think the witchcraft community is even, even worse because most people are quite happy in this kind of solitary um don't need to don't need to experience other people or other people's craft um but then we've commented about moots before haven't we about the fact that actually you know we both attend really amazing moots um but then we also attend other really shit moots um, and again, yeah. lack of in innovation is often the problem. Well, I don't know. I think it's a lack of brain cells being able to rub together to spark an idea sometimes <laughs> with some of them. But there we go. I mean, with the, regards to back in the day, I mean, the whole moot thing and stuff like that. You, If you were interested in the occult, you'd have to go to somewhere like that. You know, you yeah. couldn't really go knocking on the door of a secret society because you wouldn't know they existed. But <laughs> You hear about certain things in a pub and all that kind of thing. You get chatting to people at the pub because it's a community. Or oh, what are all those weird cloaked people doing going upstairs? Oh, that's the moot. What the fuck is the moot? You know, that kind of thing. You would start to involve yourself that way. And the same with the bookshops as well. You know, you can say that about bookshops when you look at, um, oh, is it Pyramid Books? Or is it Atlanta? can't remember the one in on museum street in london that's atlantis um, yeah atlantis that's it atlantis um they obviously used to host what is essentially a moot and stuff like that down in the basement all of these sorts of things nowadays they're online mm -hmm. so does that mean that because we know for a fact that these kind of things are kind of dying out aren't they they don't seem to last for very long and the caliber of people that go aren't people that really have much of a hope that it's going to really last and yet magical folk 
they don't really seem to be all that bothered with it. There's a lot of talk about, oh, it's a bit of a shame, it's a bit of a shame, but there isn't a lot of actual effort being put into saving any. I mean, we have a moot down in Bristol, uh, two moots technically, but it's one big kind of open circle moot just takes place on different days. Um, that meets regularly, but there are certain, there are bits of pieces of magic that's there to keep that alive. So why are a lot of the moots not including magic in keeping their survival and such, or are they, or is there not enough seekers or what? Where is this lack of community in person? And I'm going, because you can go on Reddit and there's shitloads of fucking idiots. But where is the people meeting up in person? Is that not something that the younger generation and that really want, maybe? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I don't know. I think, I think to a certain extent, we've become more and more insular. Um, and we don't interact with people in the same way that we used I well I feel like we used to but again maybe that's us showing our age mm. um of where clubs happen and as in like group societies and group groups um because I, I see kind of both ends like you've got the really really little kids um and thanks to a lot of parents um, I don't know if it's like this down where you are, but up here, um, they're all doing like Sunday football leagues and and all that yeah. kind of, you know, they see they're very well socialised. Mm. And I wonder if it's because there's been a lack of it for a while. And now suddenly a load of those have now reached the point where they're parents and they're suddenly going, I need to socialise my kids. Um, like as a reaction to the fact that there isn't enough out there for adults to do. Mm. Um, and then questioning whether or not actually do people just not want to spend time with other, other grown adults? I don't know. Um, but I, I don't know what the fix is to it either. I just, I do worry for the community as to will they outlast what's currently going on um you know we're quite lucky our, the pub that we do our moot in um is a proper little old man's pub yeah um which is funny because it's called the widows which actually means widows huh. um because it was originally set up by two widowed women um who actually built you know had the first pu the pub built so, you know, it's a little old man pub that's kind of got two tiny little rooms, little shoebox rooms. Um, and the beer is awful. Um, so I drink all the bottled stuff because I don't trust what coming comes out of their taps. Um, yeah. It's one of those. Um, but you know, they've made a real effort over the last few years and, and have really refurbed the inside. And hopefully that means they're going to, you know, get more clientele. But we're quite lucky. We meet in the middle of the week, um, once a month. And we are probably one of their good finance days because um, it's in the middle of nowhere. Mm. So it's not like it's passing trade or, you know, you either know the widows is there or you or you don't um but it survived two calls already so you know maybe the maybe those two widows did did some work in the old days to make sure it would still exist in a few hundred years i don't know well work did often get done for things like that but i think a lot of it tends to be linked to the building itself because there's a lack of foresight into, well, the pub's always going to be needed. It's the building we have to worry about. And then you get this old pub, which is just standing. How is still standing? Who knows? But it is still standing. But it's, no one wants it. No one wants to take it on. It's like an old lady that's wetting itself in the corner. You're like, mm, I suppose we should do something with that. But let's turn our eyes away for now. Anyway, that's it for the regular edition of the No Holes Bar Witchcraft podcast. You can join us on Patreon for the extended edition where we'll talk about all sorts of other witchy shenanigans and such. 